Hey guys, what's going on? This is Brad from the Ed Army, and today we have the return of What's the Scoop. Today we are going to be focusing on ST18, which for you guys who don't know, this is um, Guardians Vortex focusing on the new Digimon Liberators um, Digimon, and we're going to be focusing specifically on the Terramon through um, to Zephagamon line, so basically the main uh, characters line Digimon. We do have other additional cards, so if you do want me to look over them at some point, let me know down in the comments below. But we have What's the Scoop returning. It's about time. I finally had the time to start making more videos again just because I've been busy with stuff. And we have the return of What's the Scoop. And I wanted to start off with these structure decks. Because I think these lines are going to be very important as we get moving forward. Because with the webcomic basically going to be taking the place of the anime for now. We should be looking for it for new support. And in this case, we have these cards. So we should look into it because it's probably going to be important in the meta at some point. I already see the, where they're going with these decks. So you may or may not want to um, pick these up while you have the chance. Also, we, I will be doing ST19 as well, which is Fable Waltz. Um, focusing on the other character, which is Ariza. So as we get into it, you will see it. But let's just get started because we have um, a new line of Digimon here. And this is basically the fully supported line that we have received the promo cards for. So let's get to it. Starting off with the level 2, we have a brand new Digimon. We have Fluffymon, which is a cute little dinosaur bird type of creature. And we start off with it being a green level 2 with a simple inheritable. When attacking once per turn, you may suspend one other Digimon with DP less than or equal to this Digimon. So let's move into the brand new Terramon that's introduced into this line as you start to see how maybe the deck is supposed to function better. We have the brand new um, Terramon focusing in the structure deck, of course, and this is a three cost 1k DP with an inheritable and having a non-play effect. So on play, you can reveal the top three cards of your deck Add one card with the bird slash avian in one of its traits and one card with the vortex warriors slash liberator trait among them to your hand. Obviously, you will return the rest to the deck bottom so you can net two cards off of this and it's inheritable is just like the promo or yeah, the promo Terramon. This is simple. Your turn. This Digimon gets 2000 DP. Really hard to beat a big buff like that, but that's what you get. Let's move into the level four. We have a brand new Galemon, and this Galemon is actually very instrumental to explain the strategy and introduces a brand new keyboard as well. So let's get started. We have Terramon, or I mean, sorry, we have Galemon. So it's, it has a security effect, which reads as follows. You may play one card with the Liberator trait and a play cost of four or less from your hand or trash without paying the cost. And then finally, we have the new keyword, which is Vortex. So Vortex reads as follows. At the end of your turn, this Digimon may attack an opponent's Digimon. This Digimon may attack with this effect on the turn it was played. So additionally, we have the um, Inheritable, basically another 2k buff. So it makes Galmon um, make the stack really big if it's on top of any Terramon. So that's really good. That's 4k DP attached to any Digimon, so really big. I'll explain Vortex a little bit later, so don't worry. I'll get into it. So we're going to be talking about the brand new Grand Galemon, which is the level 5. This will be its first printing out of the structure deck when we get it, or the starter deck. So um, look into that because it is important. As it reads as follows. So on play and when Digivolving, you suspend one Digimon. If this effect suspends your Digimon, you may play one Digimon card with the Bird slash Avian in one of its traits with 3000 DP or less below from your hand without paying the cost. Additionally, for its inheritable, we have your turn once per turn. When this Digimon attacks your opponent's Digimon, you may unsuspend this Digimon. So very simple, very aggressive. And we finally have the boss monster. This is Zephagamon, and Zephagamon is the level 6 for this line, as we will be seeing it. It is the cover card of uh, EX7, so if you haven't um, known what this card is, that's that Digimon. And we'll get into the one from the structure deck, which is a play cost 11 with 11k DP. Digivolves 4-3 on top of any level 5 green. And we have a lot of effects here. So let's get started. First, it carries Vortex as well. So I'll read it one more time before I explain how this works. So at the end of your turn, this Digimon may attack an opponent's Digimon. This Digimon may attack with this effect on the turn it was played. And now we have its one Digivolving effect, which is when Digivolving, you suspend one Digimon. Then you unsuspend one Digimon. And all turns, once per turn, when a Digimon is unsuspended, this Digimon is unaffected by your opponent's Digimon effects and gets 3000 DP for the turn. This Digimon also has a rule, technically a trait addition, which it has the bird dragon type, which is something we have seen in Digimon such as the Jazzamon and um, Volcantrum Online Digimon. They possess that. 
Um, so pretty much it has that additional trait because it does have a lot. I think it has Liberator. It has um, Vortex Guardian. It has a lot of um, traits already established. So they had to put that there because it basically fits all of them and there's a lot of traits on it. Let's move into the brand new Tamer. So we have, well, technically not brand new Tamer, but the brand new Shoto for the starter deck, which is a memory fixer. So it's very good to have this because I think the line was going to need one anyways, and I'm glad they gave one really soon. So it starts off simple enough with the simple memory fixing ability. They have two or less memory. You set your memory to three. And then it's a specific effect is your turn. When one of your Digimon attacks your opponent's Digimon by suspending this Tamer, you may change the attack target to another of your opponent's Digimon or the player. So um, I'll get into implications later. And basically security effect, you just play it. There's nothing crazy there. As we move into the final card that I will be discussing today, which is the five cost option, which is... Um, which is Anemoy Embrace. I almost mispronounced that like three times. Basically, its effect is this. Main, you suspend one Digimon. If this effect suspended your Digimon, you return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of the deck. Then you unsuspend one Digimon. Um, a security effect, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of the deck. And there we have it. So pretty much that's what we have for this line. It's actually rather interesting because, you know, obviously, if you guys have never watched What's the Scoop before, this is the part of the video where I kind of just talk about what this can be um, focusing on, kind of how the strategy is supposed to work, or how some of these new cards are going to be more applicable with past support. So starting off with what the deck is actually themed around, I think this is really interesting because this deck actually has... Um, a mixture of a lot of good uh, characteristics from other decks. So basically, after reading the first effect of some of these cards, so one that is really interesting to look at is actually going to be the new the egg, the fluffy mon. So the fluffy mon is a basically a suspending effect with DP focused on your Digimon. So the bigger Digimon is, the better when it attacks, this effect will work. So. This basically means like if it's huge when it attacks, you're basically suspending something really big or something small. Basically, this deck is really focused on board clearing, which is a really interesting effect that I like. Um, this becomes more clear when you get to something like um, the uh, Galemon and you look at its effect effectively to do Vortex. So um, I want to get into Vortex quick. So basically, Vortex is really interesting because it combines two interesting uh, characteristics that were on two different cards and mixes them together really well. So the first thing it does is that it combines the effect of BT15 Monimon with, in a way, mixes it with Rush. So... The best way to explain it is that with the BT15 Monimon, its effect with the Insectoids allows it to attack, uh, allows the Digimon to attack into your opponent's Digimon. So they have to have something suspended. You can't just attack for face. Um, but this one is mixed with Rush because it does have that stipulation where the Digimon may attack with this effect the turn it was played. Basically meaning Vortex allows a Digimon to come into play and if it has better setup to run over something, it can do it, and effectively it can do it on the turn it comes in. So it's like getting everything you want in a single keyword, because you get rush, you get the ability to attack, and you get to play a body, um, maybe to end your turn, but you have an opponent's Digimon that you just want to destroy. So if a Digimon has Vortex, you basically play it in, and if it can run it over, it can run it over. But remember, it has to be at the end of your turn. And it has to be a Digimon. So you can't just play this for like something like a Blitz Omni and hope to go for game. It does not do that. So that's the key thing with Vortex. Vortex does not allow you to go for game. Uh, basically, what I was trying to go with with the effects, besides Vortex, it's clear that this line is basically supposed to suspend Digimon, unsuspend your Digimon to do attacks. So Zephagamon makes it very clear that it wants to like run over either Digimon or go face. This Digimon does not have an ability. These Digimon line does not have an ability to security check yet. So you're not going to be doing massive damage. So I think what the deck is doing is keeping your opponent's board empty long enough for you to build up enough Digimon to do considerable swings, um, do massive damage into their security because unless they have like options or security bombs, you're basically going to run over every single Digimon that's in your way. So that's a good thing. Also, Zephagamon is unaffected. Um, so that's like pretty nuts because it focuses more when a Digimon is unsuspended. So this is a really good thing to allow it to deal with security options or um, effects like that. So it's just pretty good. Uh, you just got to keep in mind it is only unaffected by opponent's Digimon effects. So options will deal with it. Um, tamers with 
if any stun tamers exist they would do that as well so just making it clear to you guys that's what this does um the new Shoto is actually really interesting because the one thing I was wondering about, I know this is probably how it works, is that it does have a when attacking effect, basically, or when your Digimon attacks, you use the new Shoto. And I think if I remember correctly how this works, you would declare your attack, your opponent would not have access to blocker timing yet. But this is going to be important because Shoto is basically making clear that you have to declare what you're attacking into first because when you use its ability to change the targets, you must already have declared one in order to make a change because you can't change from nothing if you're just attacking into, like, the player. You can't just decide all of a sudden, oh, um, you know, I really meant to attack you. You have to declare where you're attacking. So this is kind of an important um, distinction, I think, coming forward with this card. It just wants to make sure you, as a player, you make sure where you tell your opponent what you're going to be doing when you attack. So this is interesting because for blocker timing, I believe the blocker timing takes place after when you would have your ace or your blast digi evolution. So basically your opponent could go for a block and since your Digimon is already, uh, when one of your Digimon attacks, so you've already declared the attack, you, um, I believe you would be allowed to use Shoto, suspend him, and change the attack target to another Digimon or the player. So this would be like a redirection. So I do believe this takes place during when attacking procedure so the when attackings take place and then you would use this effect to kind of redirect it so i don't think it works how most people are assuming where you would have the person go for blocker timing then you would suspend this to basically change it because i think you'd be what you'd be outside of the when attacking um clause like i said i could be wrong but make sure we find that out because i just want to make sure because if it does do that that makes this card extremely good because this means this tamer basically allows you to get around blockers to save yourself, um, save, for your opponent to save themselves. So it's just really, really strong. And then finally, the option card is just really good generically because it's decent removal. It's not anything too crazy to write home about. It's kind of like a, I would say like a worse version of, um, what is it called? Um, it's the Imperial Dramon option. I can't, I don't know why I can't think of the name right now. But basically, when you use it, you suspend it, and then you could like bottom deck it or return to the hand. Um, it's basically like that card, but it's not as good. But this card is fantastic if you have a lot of memory, because basically you can get rid of threats, unsuspend your Digimon, and continue to attack. So I think this deck is missing maybe a way to gain additional memory. So if there's any way it could gain extra memory, it would be pretty difficult to defeat. So uh, yeah, pretty much this deck is actually very good. I think one of its biggest uh, weaknesses right now is it's going to need more support. So the reason I say it needs more support is that this deck doesn't have any specific additional lines I think that could go well with it because they won't necessarily mesh in the same way. This deck doesn't have alternative evolution costs on top of like different colors. So you can't mesh it too well with other cards. They have to have a green bottom end. You could use other green cards, like one I'm obviously looking at is like Lopmon, Interiormon, and um, the, yeah, basically that whole line of Digimon to use as additional rookies to help you support your tamers and get them into play with like the new, t the Terriermon from um, the structure deck from Double Typhoon. You could even use Double Typhoon if you wanted to, to play Lopmon. You can give your Digimon Alliance if you really want to, to use it to be more aggressive so um, turning those additional checks um, into, you know, security attack plus one checks from Alliance would be really strong on like a Zephagamon because it would just make it a lot bigger and a lot more threatening, but also pressuring your opponent. So there's a lot of stuff you could add here. I think depending on if the Zephagamons are good or not, um, really depends on what you would play on your top end because... I think the bottom end's really solid. Zephagamon in from the structure deck is actually a very good card. So I don't want people to look at it like it's bad. I think it's actually insane for what it does um, in terms of being a structure deck boss monster. So it has all the elements that are really good. But I do think it's going to need a little bit more refinement because this deck is clearly weak if you remove its stack, which is, I think, its biggest problem. This deck does not have good recoverability. So, you know, that's going to be its issue going forward. Is it, How does it recover? Does it have any way to not, um, you know, lose immediately? Because I think this deck's biggest weakness as well is it really does focus on having that established body and that established um, board to pressure. So you basically need Zephagamon with its um, inheritables underneath it to really pressure the opponent. And depending on what we get from the other cards, um, 
are yeah we're still needing this deck is like almost i think uh probably like in its uh beta stages of like how it's supposed to function i think after we get ex7 we're probably gonna need one more line of support additionally to kind of help the deck get to where it needs to be because i do see what they're going with this deck is actually very linear i think so beginning players are gonna love this one specifically because it's not hard to use i think it's pretty much just go big stack up and then swing for face which is really cool and then you pressure your opponent's board so if they really want to have a racing game with you they're gonna have to stay in raising big reason i want to talk about this deck i might actually build this deck but i'm not sure at the moment but i really want to give this a leg up and also this is what's the scoop that returns so we have it back and i'm just glad to be doing digimon content again even for the card game so pretty much guys that's all i've got for you today these are the cards if you want me to review more cards from both structure decks that will be coming up because feeble waltz will be the next video for what's the scoop and it'll be coming out soon um let me know and yeah pretty much that's all i've got for you guys today so as always this is brad from the ad army signing off and for all of you out there to sign on.